So I am grateful to be joined right now by Marty Chan, who is arguably one of Edmonton's most successful writers. He has, uh, he has done enormous work. We're going to see more about his work later on, but I'm going to ask him first about uh, how Chinese-Canadian writing has changed from its earlier years. Well, it's changed quite a bit, I think. It, years and years ago, it started off with uh, authors and, and playwrights writing about the landed immigrant experience. So you had people like Wei Sin Choi and uh, Denise Chong uh, writing about uh, basically their families growing up in Vancouver Chinatown or Nanaimo Chinatown. So very culturally specific. Very culturally specific. And what we call specific. social realism. Yeah. And then we started seeing people deal with their identity crisis, the, the children of the landed immigrants talking about being caught between being Chinese and being Canadian. And so you have people like myself uh, doing a play called Mom, Dad, I'm Living with a White Girl, or Evelyn Lau writing a runaway portrait of a, a street kid. Right. Uh, and now we're starting to see sort of a new emergence. People are uh, sort of the grandchildren of the landed immigrants uh, writing about more urban experiences like Terry Wu and Banana Boys and what it's like just to be an Asian male hanging out and you just happen to be Chinese. Right, and Banana Boy meaning yellow on the outside. Yellow on the outside, white on the inside. Right. I would be a banana. <laughs> okay. All right, well, we're going to find out more about your excellent work and we're going to be seeing some Kung Fu and some uh, line dance shortly, but first let's go to Jenny with the Alberta Chinese Orchestra. Here I am with uh, Marty Chan, and uh, Marty Chan is, of course, the writer of all of these books that are right in front of us right now. And although Marty is very humble, I just if I ask him what he's done, he won't tell you. I said he's the most successful writer in the city. Something like 20 plays, written for television, got a Gemini nomination for his very first produced script, which was The Orange Seed Myth, worked for Jake and the Kids and Mentors, those are TV shows, written three novels, and you've toured the country. All of that you've done, and yet you have a kind of a low profile. Why is that? Uh... I guess I'm Chinese. <laughs> you have to be humble. All right. Uh, no, I think uh, sometimes when you, you uh, work hard at something, you, you focus more on the work than, than sort of the accolade. So I, I prefer just to do the work. Right. Well, what, what is your favorite thing about the work that you do? I think that my favorite thing uh, is, is, is actually uh, being able to hear other people talk about it. Uh, my favorite thing that has not happened yet is to sit in a coffee shop right. and hear two people discussing something that I've written, and they don't know that I'm actually sitting there, so I can actually hear their true opinions of the right. work. Right. So somebody like quoting you to you, that's almost a Harry yeah, Met exactly. Sally moment, right? As long as it's not like, oh man, I just read the latest Marty Chan book. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, now, uh, you, you have accomplished all of this, and I, I'm curious to know, uh, to what degree was parental encouragement part of your success? Do we have to use the word encouragement? <laughs> uh, rebellion might be a better word. Uh, my, my mom and dad, they really wanted me to take something uh, more of a traditional route in terms of career. They wanted me to be an engineer. And uh, I thought, uh, I like writing, but I guess engineering's the right t thing to do. And I went into university, took a year uh, of engineering, and um, I got the lowest GPA uh, average in recorded history, I think. Uh, on a nine-point scale, mine was 1.3. So you really mm -hmm. loved engineering. You're gifted, oh, I, I was great. I was at most of the uh, classes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you got the beard degree. Well, I was hungover. But yes, I, was I at understand. Most of the All right, well, uh, I'm curious, though, you're, you're one of your most famous works is Mom, Dad, I'm Living with a White Girl. Now, up until you wrote that, uh, legend has it that you were resistant to writing material that was specific to a Chinese-Canadian experience. Tell me about the reluctance and tell me about writing that work. Well, I really, when I started, when I decided to become a writer, I really wanted to establish myself as a writer before people started labeling me as the Chinese hyphen Canadian writer. And I thought it was really important to showcase my talent as a writer before people started uh, judging me for the, the content. Right. And so for five years, I worked really hard writing uh, plays at the Edmonton Fringe, uh, doing some uh, writing for the Edmonton Journal and really avoiding anything to do with my Chinese background because I wanted to show to people that I was a writer first and a Chinese-Canadian writer second. Yes. And, and well, so then you turned the corner. You suddenly did this play, Mom, Dad, I'm Living with a White Girl. And, and that, many people know you for that more than they know you for anything else. Yes. Uh, then, then I decided after five years, now is my chance to tackle something that uh, has, uh, has roots in my own heritage. And plus, I wanted to stick it to my mom. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, we're going to find out more about how you did that. And uh, also, we're going to find out more about Marty's other work, and we're going to see some kung fu coming up and some more music. But first, we're going to go to Kim at the resources desk. Sun Lin Phai Lok 
Happy Chinese New Year. Welcome back to Help TV and our celebration of Chinese New Year. And I'm here once again with acclaimed author Marty Chan. And Marty, you've got a book that's what about to come out next week, is it? It's coming out next week. It's being shipped from the printers right now. <laughs> As we speak. I'm tracking it. <laughs> Tell me about this book and what it's about. It's called The Mystery of the Mad Science Teacher, and it's the third in the Marty Chan Mystery Series. And it's a book about a, a, a trio of kid detectives who think their elementary school teacher is stealing things from students. Stealing things. Yes. All right. Stealing supernatural things or everyday things. Everyday things. Bicycles, video games. <laughs> uh, but he's doing it in an odd way. He's actually. They think he's building robots to steal things. <laughs> That's great. Now, uh, what is for you one of the allures of writing for young adults? Uh, I think because I haven't grown up yet, it's it's, <laughs> it's easier to write for kids. Um, I love the idea of uh, the creativity that uh, uh, kids have, and I, I, I always want to sort of tap into that and, and never grow up. Peter Pan syndrome. Right. Now, you have had the chance to uh, read directly to uh, young audiences across Western Canada, even as far as Ontario, I think, in the yeah, Maritimes. Yeah, and I've uh, been out to Halifax, and it's great to be able to go in and spend a little time with the kids and talk about the books, and even get some of their responses to books and some of their ideas. I'm curious to hear about their responses. How, how do they feel about your stories? They actually really identify it, even though the main the, the, the protagonist in, in the book is a, a Chinese character. Um, they actually can identify with a lot of things that are going on. Like, for example, in The Mystery of the Graffiti Ghoul, the first chapter is all about um, having to try on horrible clothes that your mother insists <laughs> that you wear. Right. And uh, in, my, in, in my case, I had to wear this uh, ugly pair of neon green corduroy pants, uh, the, the corduroy of the 1970s, which basically looked like a chia pet had exploded on my <laughs> legs. Right. And uh, the kids hear that story and they go, oh, I know that. And they don't know the Chia Pet pants, but they know right. some article of clothing that yes. their, their parents have forced them to wear. Well, it's very interesting because sometimes writers are told that unless you're writing from a universal perspective, which really means that it's a European Canadian or European American experience, that it won't have uh, appeal to people. But as you prove, non-Chinese Canadians want to read stories featuring Chinese Canadian characters. As long as there's a human element to it, I think you're, you're very much right about the, the universal experience. People sort of mistake that for the Euro-Canadian experience. But ultimately, it comes down to just your core values, the mm -hmm. things that, that you deal with. Like in the case of mom, dad, I'm living with a white girl. Uh, even though three of the four characters are Chinese, people still identify with it. I remember the play went out to uh, Winnipeg. And at the opening night, a, U a, a Ukrainian couple actually came up to me and said, oh, you told our story. <laughs> and I thought, oh, wow, that's great to hear. But it's really these Chinese characters. And, and they went through the same thing with their, their parents in terms of an intergenerational conflict where right. The husband was, uh, his family just came from the Ukraine. The wife's family had been there for many generations, and there was that sort of conflict between the two families. All right. Well, now your book's out next week. Uh, folks can pick it up uh, around, and they can go to your website where they can find out more about your, your books and your yep. plays and all that other great stuff. Yep. MartyChan.com. All right. Thank you very much, okay. Marty.